Hello guys, I am Stan and I'll be guiding you today through your installation of uh, Mozilla Hub's Community Edition on a Microsoft Azure AKS cluster. Um, right in front of me, I've got the article. Um, if you prefer to read the article, I should you, I can recommend you read it. But if you find having a visual example uh, with a video, you can follow this guide. But just to let you know, there's a written um, guide out there as well. Before we start, there are a few prerequisites that need to be present on your system. Uh, for, we're going to use Kubernetes, so we're going to need to have the kube control command installed. And we're going to use Azure, so we need the Azure CLI uh, downloaded. And you also, if you don't already have an active Azure subscription, um, it's it's free to have a subscription, but you what it comes down to is just adding your credit card information to Azure, um, so you can use the pay as you go plan. That's the plan I am using. If you're using another plan, it could be a little bit different, but uh, most of the stuff will be the same. We're also gonna need an SMTP server. We're gonna use Bravo for that in this tutorial. But if you want to use another uh, SMTP server, you can, but I myself won't cover that in this blog post. After that, we're gonna also use a domain from Namecheap. Um, you can, I myself like to buy my domains off of Namecheap and use their uh, DNS servers. But if you have another domain, the steps are generally the same, but keep in mind, uh, we will use Namecheap. There's also some other stuff you might want to read before we start. So you can uh, customize your installation. Um, uh, so you should get the blog post and read a bit globally through the chapters especially the last couple of chapters where we explain the costs and uh, scaling um, and uh, tips and tricks. Uh, later I will come back to these chapters but first we're gonna continue and actually start. Oh, okay, then we're going to go water. Setting up the Azure environment. Um, if you've installed the Azure CLI, you can open your uh, command line of choice. I like to use CMD. You can also use your command prompt. And first of all, you're going to need to log in with AZ login if you haven't already. I myself have already logged in so we can so we can continue uh, with the tutorial so we go az group create dash dash name mm, uh, and you will give your name here of the resource group we're going to create um, the default uh, is my resource group but Let's make it easy and create a resource group called Hubs. Uh, yeah, let's call it Hubs CE. I forgot because we actually need to add a location. Um, I am from Europe, but if you're from US or any other region, you can find here in the docs if you're struggling, you can find all the flags you need, all the information you need, for example, the locations or 
other commands related to your group. Um, you can find them on the docs, on the Microsoft docs. But I need to add a location. I'm from Europe, so West Europe. It's been made, succeeded. So we can go to the next step. And that's to create a security group within the research group. So let's go AZ network, NSG, create, dash dash resource group. I've done this many times, so it's come up as another suggestion. A resource group, hubs CE, with the name called mm, mm, hubs network security group. It needs two, one, so like this. Now it's going to create our network security group. Great. So now we've got three more commands we need to add. So we can just copy this. Um, I need to change this one. because it's hubs CE and NSG name is hubs NSG. You can create it, boom, and it's done. You can go on to the next one. Again, you can, you need to fill in the correct name. We've got for our network security group hubs and SG and resource group name is hubs CE. So now, now we've got another and the last one is right here. So we add it. We again change the name. If you would just want to rock these default settings you can. I'm just changing it so you can be a bit and some people will be a bit more mindful of the presence of the variables of the names. So hubs NSG, hubs NSG, and our name is hubs CE. So after that, we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so now we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. Um, I really recommend you go through this and it's a bit more in depth written here. But what it comes down to is I explain here what a Kubernetes cluster is and what is the difference between plain Kubernetes and Azure Kubernetes service. What it comes down to is you have Kubernetes and it's an open source framework you can use for deployment like we're doing in this blog in this tutorial and Azure Kubernetes service is just an extension of the Kubernetes framework that is hosted on Microsoft services on the servers on the servers of Microsoft with some benefits Okay, so let's create a, a Kubernetes cluster. So what we're going to do is look at what kind of machine we're going to use or we're going to need. There's two machines I recommend you uh, look for. You've got the standard for a more personal use and uh, the F8S. It's f you can use for large scale events. It's a really powerful machine. So what you want to do uh, is look uh, in this chapter for scaling for large events. Um, but for this tutorial, I'll go ahead and use this one. But your it doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, you'll get the same uh, output. You can still follow along. So 
let's just uh, yeah create it. So go here, go to our handy dandy CMD -er. and I'll go and paste it. Um, so we're gonna need the standard f2s underscore v2 um, yeah that's it so if you now hit enter we'll go ahead and get this you can ignore this and now it's going to start creating your cluster so what we want to do now uh, is just wait and until the, it's done creating. Okay, so some time has passed and it has finished. So you get, you see a big JSON output. It's pretty large and uh, something like this. And now our cluster has been created. Um, enjoy your coffee if you got some or you are to drink um, but let's uh, fetch the data we need from our cluster using the Azure CLI so uh, we've got this command right here az aks get credential credentials dash dash res source group hubs ce and then the name of the cluster we just made. Mine is called Hubs Cluster. And now you can see Hubs Cluster has been set as the current context uh, in our Kubernetes config file. So what we can do now to check if we've connected successfully is kubectl get namespaces. If you're on Azure, you should see these four, the default, and these are, uh, or you've got the default namespace, and these three are made uh, by Azure. So, yeah, you can leave them be. Um, you shouldn't touch them, and you don't have to touch them. So you can just leave them be. And now, so you've got an output similar like this. If so, great. Let's continue. So now that we've set up our AKS cluster, uh, we're gonna uh, install Community Edition. So if you go and head and go to the Mozilla Hubs Cloud uh, master branch on GitHub, you're gonna see this. Uh, you can just download the zip. You can go to your download folder downloads and then you can proceed extract uh, and then you can proceed uh, yeah and open the file so I'm gonna use uh, Visual Studio code here it's an easy tool uh, I really recommend you use it um, yeah so you've got uh, a lot of folders uh, for but there's only one folder important and that's the community edition one so you've got a different files you've got a readme and this is the same stuff that is uh, listed on YouTube or this readme uh, yeah. contains some basic information uh, about the repository and uh, deploying so what you uh, can add or what you should change is the following you've got the render hcce uh, file um don't worry if it looks complicated it's all gonna make sense 
So you've got your hub domain, your admin email, the namespace, uh, the DB user, past name, host, and host T, Postgres DBI, and uh, PSQL. Um, uh, and you've got these for an SMTP server. And then you have these values. You can actually add just as these ones. Uh, these are the commands that I used. If it doesn't say anything to you, don't worry. Uh, it's not necessary to know these commands. So, what I would like uh, you to do, we've got the uh, CBB that uh, uh, sh uh, script. Um, got this one this is uh, for later down the line for adding our certificates it's not important now I've got our main uh, file that we'll be working in render HCCE we've got two YAM files dot YAM CBB it's related to this one and HCCE dot YAM hubs cloud community edition it's what it stands for uh, and maybe if you're familiar with uh, modeling uh, files you've got xml json but you've also got a yaml which stands for yet another modeling language and here we have uh, a dot yam file the dot yam just uh, means that it contain it's not a complete file because it's got these variables these variables will be replaced with the values you enter in here so here you've got for example node cookie here you have node cookie, the value you if you do one, two, three here, the eventual hc.yaml file which will be rendered or will be made with this command will have the one two three value. But that will come later. Just ignore that for now. Um, yeah. So we're gonna configure uh, our render file. Okay. So we've got the first variable, hub domain, which is the domain you have bought on Namecheap or uh, will buy. But for my example, I've got my own domain called mouseparts.eu. After that, you're gonna need a, a real email address for the admin email. Um, I'll add mine. After that, you can leave this as default. This is fine. Um, for security reasons, I would change these values to uh, be a bit more secure. Um, and then the, we have got these this the SMTP server port username and password here's every variable has been explained in a, a blog post but let's set up our SMTP server we will use uh, Bravo for this so you can just go to and search uh, Bravo once you're on Bravo.com you can sign up uh, for the free plan and uh, you can go to your dashboard. Next, you can go to SMTP and API. And then you have, uh, you'll have your credentials here. Mine are blurred out. Just, uh, yeah, be mindful. Um, so yeah, the SMTP server this is for everyone the same. This is uh, SMTP relay brevo.com. We've got the port 587. That's the default for SMTP. Then we've got a username. That's the login. And I've got the password. That's the one that's in stars. And we will enter. 
boom. Um, so after you've entered these credentials, um, you can go and apply it. You should go ahead and do bash render hcce. No, oh, wait, I'm in the wrong directory, so I can't read it. So I'll go and navigate to community edition bash render hcce. SH and and means it will be done synchronously, so it will be done sequentially. Bash uh, cube CTL apply minus F HCE dot YAML with an L. Remember that. So you'll enter this. If you've uh, filled in all the variables, you can go ahead and uh, go do bash render hcce dot sh and and cube ctl apply minus f hcce dot em all. Then enter. This is correct because we're not in the current directory of community edition so we can go ahead and execute it again as you can see um, there's a lot of stuff being created but if you notice very carefully um, you've got this error appears this is only in my screen uh, as far as I know and it's just something weird in uh, my uh, command prompt but it's not doing this correctly. So I'm gonna do this. So it's added this private key. And I'm gonna go and do this again. Keep in mind, if it works for you, it works. But it's just on my PC, I've got an issue. Look on the first deployment we had in okay so if you look carefully now um, you can see this has been unchanged because I did it again so um, what it does it applies this file again but since we've already pushed this essentially to the AKS, to Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes will only, um, uh, essentially it's unchanged, but if you, for example, would change this, uh, no, let's use it, our example. So if you would change deployment and change this name or for whatever reason change one of these variables it would go ahead and say it's been changed configured but we you'll actually see an example later down the line of that so if you go if you go ahead with the tutorial we've done this we saw things being created and now you can verify it with this command Let's open up this one again. kubectl get deployments, a comma, SVC. SVC stands for service, services, minus N because um, you need to append your namespace because your items are namespaced. And look, we've got this. Everything has been deployed successfully. Also have our services. And we have this external IP I'd like you to note it down somewhere or keep it in mind or you can actually just copy it to your clipboard because the next step is for our DNS and domain so go ahead to I'll go to Namecheap and uh, 
sign in. You can go to manage and then go to advanced DNS. This is from a previous one, this, so I'll just delete these. Uh, let me click. Okay, so what we will do is add uh, new records, th four A records, one for our root domain, and with the IP you've noted down in the previous step from your service. From your load balancer is the first go another another one assets go ahead and another one another a record we need one for the cores another one and one for stream boom now you can save all changes so we've done this step um yeah keep in mind dns propagation can take some time it's worked for me sometimes in less than five minutes but it's also been i've also had a, a day where it took me a bit longer than five minutes it's something out of your control if it doesn't work you can come back later but uh, you can check on various websites uh, your DNS if it's um, pointing if your domain is pointing to the correct IP address uh, you can just check those websites so manager community edition so if you want uh, to update uh, community edition what can we do we've got these commands as a um, We've got these commands the same as used to create you can delete deployments and uh, yeah so as you can see I'll delete this for example I'll delete uh, the hubs deployment so if I go ahead and go here you can see hubs is no longer present within our deployments but if we go ahead and uh, apply and uh, do this instead our bash render HCE blah 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 if you look very carefully you can see it's been created but uh, some have for example been configured a code term will always be configured uh, in a sense but that's uh, for later and now we're gonna go to the next step you can also pause your cluster um, I've done this multiple times myself it's gonna save uh, the costs on costs so you can do kubectl scale boom if you look right now you can see zero zero um, on Azure with the pay as you go plan you only pay for the resources you are using so you're using less compute using less machines so you're paying less money um, then to enable it like once again boop and now they're all up again they're starting up so it's zero out of one well within a, a couple of seconds you can see that things are starting to turn on again and yeah that's how you can pause and unpause your cluster so we've configured our DNS and pointed our domain to the IP of the load balancer but if you go to it, it doesn't really work. The admin doesn't work. And if you go to skip admin, 
you also don't really get anything. So if you look in the console, you can see cert authority invalid. So what it means is there's not a valid certificate has not been uh, added because we created our own one, but one is an official one. So uh, you can install uh, certificates on your local machine, but it will only be for you. So what we're going to do is request a certificate from uh, from a trusted organization like Let's Encrypt. And that is exactly what the next step is going to be and use. So our connection is not private. Um, so as mentioned earlier, we've got this file, cbb sh this is for cert bots here we again need to configure some details so we can go here your email uh, and your domain where you would like to request your data from your where you would like to have a certificate on. Um, so yeah, what you can do now is bash cbb.sh Boom. It's gonna ask mouse press you. Yes. So error. This is normal. This is normal behavior. Uh, it's gonna look for a pod called certbot pop dash HTTP. So if you go and enter cube control get pods minus n HTTPE. Oh, sorry. Here you've we've got all our pods, our containers that are running. So what you've got is certbot pop and it's running right now. We can actually, we can log it. Cube or it's busy, so kubectl logs minus f dash n hce cert pop pop boom. And it's made a certificate. Great. And it's now being deleted. Uh, look, it's done. Now for our subdomain assets. And this process continues for the next domains, course, and stream. You can also get a small drink or do something else in the meantime. It will be done in uh, a couple of minutes. As you can see, it has finished up. So if you go again to the domain, stuff will load, but you will notice it's still not secure. So if you go to the certificate, it's still the certificate you created yourself with the render dash uh, HCCE uh, file. So what we're going to need to do is change a line in this file. You go to here gonna look for this it's already enough if you go do this boom and you're gonna change HCCE with dollar sign hub domain what this will do is append or change this to cert hub domain which exists and which has been made by cert bot but it's not being used right now. So again, bash render hcce shell kubectl apply. So right now, uh, if you go ahead and go to the website, it can take some time. So if you go, for example, to an incognito tab, and look for the logs 
get pods. Nope, oh, it's terminating the old one because a certificate has been changed. So once the old one has been terminated, your traffic will get routed through the new HA proxy pod and that proxy pod will use the new SSL certificate. It can take up to like 50 seconds or a minute. So we'll just wait. So as you can see, it has finished terminating. So if we now go ahead to your domain, boom, you can see it's safe. You can log in. to the email, to my email, you can go and see here, boom, if you enter the magic link, boom, you're logged in, as you can see, signed in, here I'm also signed in, I can configure anything I want, important content, etc. Uh, yeah, you can customize it the way you want. Um, demo uh, post. This is for very cool people. So save. If you then go ahead to mousepress.eu, you're logged in. So you can see demo post is for very cool people. It works. So we can go to create room. It's going to try and create a room for us. Join. Right now, everything is blank. Hello, my microphone. Hello, test. So we're in. The last thing you want to do to, to enable uh, voice chat within the rooms is um, go to the security group you've made. So hubs uh, CE, go to subnets associate and add the cluster uh, you've uh, we've made in the blog post uh, to this one it's also explained within um, it's also explained in here if your voice is not working uh, go to the website portalazure.com uh, and then you go security groups, hub CE, that's the one you've made, subnets, so subnets, and at the one with your cluster name uh, in it, and create it. So after everything's working, uh, we can discuss how larger events can look or how you should set them up. So we've got horizontal and vertical scaling. Those are two terms you should keep in mind. We've got horizontal, that's the amount of instances, so replicas. And we've got vertical and that is the specs, how much resources are allocated to a certain container or pod um, so uh, I've made a github repository where two files are located scalers.yaml and hcce.yam uh, the yam file you're supposed to replace with the original one uh, that came with community edition and you've got a scalers and you can apply scalers.yaml with uh, kubectl apply uh, minus f minus f scalers.yaml minus n your namespace so hcce in our case and it creates them this uh, yeah enables horizontal scaling so 
if uh, the pod is has an average utilization of 80% of over 80% it will add replicas to your instance some things to keep in mind uh, in the blog post I go into the costs and the details of it a bit more and some tips and tricks uh, to keep in mind um, Kiran made a really good article about it for the Google platform, but also Kubernetes in general. So you should definitely check that out if you're struggling or just wanting to know a bit more about Kubernetes and what you're exactly doing. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and ask them in the Discord. Uh, please be nice. People always want to help. Be respectful of that. And when you've got a problem, uh, try to search for it first within the Discord and then if you can't find it just uh, uh, draw a context of what is happening what did you expect what did you do and have you tried anything uh, else yeah and yeah people will help eventually so be patient please and enjoy thank you for watching and uh, I hope you have a successfully running cluster.